Welcome to my lecture online. We're now ready to do a small example of what heat transfer looks like when we take into account conduction. And what we're doing here is taking what we did before. We took a small window pane that had a width of 0.5 centimeters with a known conductivity constant, and we calculated the heat transfer across the window when the inside temperature was 20 degrees centigrade and the outside temperature was zero degrees centigrade. We did that in the previous section where we dealt with conduction, heat conduction, not heat convection. And the value that we obtained was 3,200 watts, which seemed like an awful lot. But now when we take into account that there's going to be convection on the inside and convection on the outside, and let's say that we now include the heat transfer coefficient for the inside and the outside because of convection. Now these are just totally randomly picked numbers. Well, not completely random. They do fall within the range of acceptable values. But let's say that on the inside it's 10 watts per square meter oh yeah, per centigrade degree. On the outside it's 20 watts per square meter per centigrade degree. What will be the heat transfer through our window now? The parameters are the same, half a centimeter wide. It is still one square meter in area with the same heat conductivity constant. What will be the transfer now? So the equation, is, instead of this, is now going to become as follows. The dQ dt, which can be written as Q dot, it's not going to be equal to the change in the temperature between the inside and the outside. And now we're going to have three of those heat resistance values. We're going to have one over H inside times the area plus the path of the conductivity divided by K times A plus one over H on the outside times the cross-sectional area. So now you can see we have these three resistance values one for the outside, one for the inside, and one for the conductivity to the glass. So when we plug in the numbers, what do we get? So we get Q dot is equal to the difference in the temperature between the outside and the inside, which is 20 centigrade degrees, divided by 1 over H sub I, which is going to be 20. And we're going to leave out the units to make things a little bit cleaner, times 1. And let's just leave out the units like that. And then we have plus converted to meters for the width is 0 0.005 divided by 1 over k, which is 0 0.8 times 1 square meter plus 1 over. Now on the inside we have 10 times the cross-sectional area. Okay, now we have q dot is equal to 20 divided by, and I'm going to write those intermediate values down because they do give us a little bit more of an understanding. So 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05, so that would be 0 0.05 plus uh, 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.8 equals, that would be 0 0.00625 plus over there, that would be 0 0.1. Now, notice the resistance to the heat flow on the outside and the inside due to convection is much greater than the resistance to heat flow through the glass itself. Well, that's kind of interesting. In other words, it's much more difficult to get the heat to the window on the inside and get the heat away from the window on the outside than it is to drive the heat through the window itself. Consequently, there's going to be a much smaller temperature difference between the inside and the outside of the window itself. So if you were to take the temperature of the surface of the window on the inside and the temperature of the surface of the window on the outside, the difference would be much smaller than the difference away from the window on the inside and away from the window on the outside. That is because of the convection. Now, plugging in these numbers, we get uh, one, uh, let's see here, we get 0.15 plus 0 0.00625, take the inverse of that, times 20, which is 128 watts. So the heat flow through the window is only 128 watts, rather than 3200 watts that we calculated before when we completely ignored heat convection. Wow! That means that convection is a very important factor in heat flow and heat transfer that we need to take into account. So, yes, much, much lower through the window. So have as many windows as you want in your house. You won't lose as much heat through them as you would if we didn't have convection. Now, of course, 
when the wind is blowing more strongly on the outside, we have a forced heat, uh, forced uh, airflow on the outside. That's going to change, but that's for another problem. And that is how it's done.